Canadian Computer Collector here. My brother and I recently tried to turn a pair of old iMacs into dedicated monitors. Dedicated wham. However, just like us, one of them was more broken than we thought. Oh my god. But don't worry, we did manage to make one beautiful monitor, and if you follow along, we'll show you how we did it so you can build one yourself. Stace also cooked up a pretty sweet pot pie, so we're gonna be checking in on that as well. So first of all, you're gonna wanna find yourself an old machine. Sometimes, if they are just the right age, you can get them for free or for a simple trade. For this project, we used IMAX from the thick with two C's steel plastic backed era because they're some of the easiest ones to take apart. I bought this one for $50 and it caught fire the first time I tried to turn it on. That's right, and this one we got for free from an old wizard. So next you're gonna need one of these conversion kits. This we found online. You can find one for your machine by taking the LCD panel out, checking the part number, and then looking to see if there's a conversion kit that would work with your machine. You can find these easily at a lot of different online retailers. We went with AliExpress because at the time they had the best price and we are not exactly wealthy men. It includes a control board, a power supply, some buttons on another board and absolutely no instructions at all. Oh, and a lot of wiring, a ton of wiring. So with your new toys in hand, make sure you put down your new toys and ensure that the iMac is unplugged. You don't want to be holding your new toys and trying to unplug something with a handful of new toys. That would just... That would... Just... <laughs> Next up, you want to disassemble your iMac all the way down to its internal frame. Start the disassembly by removing the glass with suction cups. Then start to unscrew the metal exterior bezel. Once you have the bezel off, take off your pants and run outside. We're good! For these builds, we went for function over form and used a lot of hot glue to hold components in place. No shame though. So as a result, we made sure that we peeled back the silver lining in all the areas where we wanted our components to go to ensure that the glue would adhere properly. Look at my hot pie. Nice. This pie in the big city. With the board and other components removed, we went ahead and tested our hardware, which is easy. Just grab the LCD panel, control board, and power supply, plug everything in together, and later, but we also went the extra mile and soldered the power cords from the iMac directly to the AliExpress board so that we would be able to use standard power for this project. <laughs> so, with everything plugged in and soldered, it was time to plug in the power. Don't forget a video source as well. So, with everything, what? <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> okay. Now at this point, you want to be able to see your video. If you have issues like we had with one of the iMacs, it'll show you your source, but it's also going to fade directly to white. For whatever reason, we couldn't figure out why this happened the way it did, but we just have one monitor that would not work. Just like kids today, am I right? <laughs> just like those kids today. <laughs> In the absence of any instructions, we also weren't able to do any troubleshooting. Whenever we had the wrong voltage being sent through because when we first started on the initial monitor, there were some issues with the hardware. We had one power supply that didn't work and was sending weird, wacky voltages through. We also had a jumper on one of the AliExpress boards that was in the wrong place from the factory, so that made things difficult as well. This is one of the most frustrating things about this project. I'm gonna go off script here. Uh, yeah. But if you don't have access to somebody who can look at a circuit board and figure out what should be where, you're basically out of luck. We also ended up getting some help from someone who didn't wanna be on camera. This was very complex and they had a background in working with circuit boards and electrical engineering. They helped us over the humps. We couldn't find anything online. We had to literally look at the listing and zoom in on the photo there. Moving along with functional hardware, it's time to unplug the power and start figuring out where you wanna place your components. We found that the power supply fit almost perfectly in the top left corner and its plastic shield would be perfect given that we're going to be sandwiching it between a monitor and its metal shell. Being the genius that I am, I tried to dry fit the thing while it was still plugged in and shocked myself up the arm. Oh my God. Okay. While it wasn't the most painful thing I've experienced, I do know for certain now, I do not like being shocked. We also decided to put the buttons for the control on the back on around the right hand side. So we drilled some holes through the plastic shell to give us access to them. Another cool thing we decided to do was solder the power button to the bottom of the control buttons board. The only issue we ran into was the IO. With the length of the cabling, it wasn't going to be able to make it anywhere near the original ports. 
So what we did was we ran cables from inside the monitor out a hole in the back. If we were doing it again, I think what we would have done was picked up some male to female cords so we could use them almost like extended ports. And we might still come back and redo it that way. Yeah, the only downside is we now have a machine with permanently wrapped cables all around it. So very useful, gorgeous display, lots of cableage uh, to ruin your day. One nice thing about doing it this way though, is you can actually power the monitor for free if you can harvest the energy from Steve Jobs spinning in his grave. I'd also like to take a second to thank our patrons. They're the ones that make this all happen, and for only one, one dollar a month, you can join that list of esteemed, uh, highly accredited individuals. So without further ado, I would like to give a big shout out to David Starbuck, AJ9805, Dana Does Stuff, Steph Joe, Brankus Creations, Evan Grill, Larry Collins, Justin Morgan, Ron's Computer Vids, S. Shrek or Shrek, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trina's Techno Babble, Garth Beagle, Mac84, and the OG Ethan Palomero. So thank you so much, everyone. Make sure you check out the link in the description. All right, with all that done, it's time to place the LCD panel back into its frame and screw it on down. If you've done it right, you shouldn't have anything interfering with the placement. And once it's on, you can put the metal frame back in place and Robert is your uncle. So there you have it, folks. One sweet little iMac that is now an external display and one that isn't. Maybe we'll find another project to make with what we already have on the go here, but as Mick Jagger said, you can't always get what you want. That's right, just like... <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh, I got that. But you can't always get what you want. That's right. Just like Mick Jagger said, it's too bad Canadian Computer Collector's project only yielded one iMac monitor. <clears throat> but if you try sometimes, you just might find Get that display! Oh. If you enjoyed today's build, be sure to check out one of my vintage projects where I put together my dream Windows XP LAN party computer. 